Today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step installation of the XS Sight Systems DXT2 night sights on the Smith & Wesson 9mm Shield Compact. Hey guys, David Jordan. Thank you for watching. So the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield, the 9mm Compact, does not come with night sights. And uh, so uh, I don't carry a fighting gun that doesn't have night sights. Uh, I've been a big dot fan for years and um, these are uh, the sights that are going on the gun today. The DXT2, these are light absorbing front sight. Um, uh, there's a, a video review that uh, I've done. Uh, the link will be below so you can check that out and find out more about the sights. Uh, but uh, in order for this to be a fighting gun, in my opinion, I've got to put some night sights on it, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. So uh, let's go to the workbench. So the first thing I'm going to do is unload uh, the pistol. So I'm going to take the magazine out and set it aside, eject the live round. I'm going to lock the uh, slide to the rear, and I'm going to check the chamber uh, visually and manually, and I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, magazine well. And um, so this it's unloaded, and I'm positive of that. So I'm going to take the uh, takedown lever down. I'm going to let the slide go forward and pull the trigger, and then just pull the slide off. Now I'm not going to need the receiver, so I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to take out the uh, recoil spring assembly and put it aside, and pull the barrel out, put it aside, and then I'm just going to. Uh, seat this down into uh, my workbench vise and tighten it up just tight enough uh, to snug it up a little bit to keep it from moving around I don't want to get it too tight where I actually start to bend the metal uh, on the slide and uh, do permanent damage so uh, it's in there nice and solid and uh, I'm going to take this punch and uh, push out the front sight uh, to one side or the other. It's just dovetailed in there and it doesn't matter which side you go on. <laughs> Alright, so it goes launching across the room. I'll, I'll go get that after a while. Um, take a, a couple of good whacks there to get it off, uh, but it's not too, too terrible. I'm going to take some alcohol and I'm going to put that on a Q-tip and I'm going to remove any grease or debris that might be in that dovetail channel where my front sight goes. So I'm going to clean that up real good. Yeah, that's kind of nasty there. And then I'm just going to let that dry off a little bit. While it's drying, I'm going to take the, uh, the DXT2 front sight and I'm going to do like a fit test there. I'm going to kind of slide that in there. And uh, yeah, it, it's not going hardly at all. So once I, as soon as I get it started, it's, it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to take a little of the material off. To do that, I'm just going to take a flat file, something simple, and I'm going to drag, I'm going to let it sit, uh, the front sight sit there. I'm just going to drag it on the file and then I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees and drag it again. And I'll do that where you can see it there. I'm trying to be careful. I want to take a little of the material off but I don't want to take too much and I want it to be even along the bottom. So that's why I turn around 180 degrees. So there's a little material going off the bottom. So I'm going to try the uh, fit test again and see if it's any better. It's not. So I'm going to continue to do that until I get the uh, a fit that I'm looking for. It'll allow the front sight to sit down in that groove a little bit more. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, I made several passes over that, and so I've got the sight uh, a little more than halfway on there, and that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to take my uh, non-marring punch here and uh, go ahead and start tapping that on. And I'm going to eyeball it. To get that front sight centered so there should be a little equal daylight on this side and this side of the slide uh, and it should be centered in the middle it's not yet so we're gonna just take our time and tap that over there Well, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go ahead and take the thread locker that comes with the new sights, and I'm going to uh, put the thread locker all in the top on the sides and let that. Um, get into all the little nooks and crannies there. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to kind of let that just sit. We're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes before we do anything with it and let that uh, seep in the end of the little nooks and crannies before we wipe it off, wipe off the excess. So while I'm doing that, while I'm letting that um, seep down in there. I'm going to go ahead and start working on the back. The 1 16th inch um, hex key to uh, undo the, uh, the set screw in the rear sight. I'm just going to turn that just a little bit, just enough to, uh, it just it just holds it, uh, the sight in place long enough to get the, uh, uh, to let the, the thread locker set in. So I'm going to uh, put my punch at the base of the rear sight, where, uh, where the base of it uh, meets the uh, dovetail on the slide, and I'm going to start tapping it out right there. Very similar to what we did with the front side. Now, there is a screw down in here there's the, the end of it there, uh, not a screw, a spring, I'm sorry. And I want to make sure that that doesn't pop out. So I'm actually going to put the punch over where the end of that spring so that when, I, when the sight gets out of the way there, it'll keep that spring from flying out on me. There it goes. And I'm going to ease that guy up. And I'm going to reach down and literally just kind of pull that spring out with the little plastic top on it. I'm going to be very careful with that. I'm going to set it right there. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and finish removing the rear sight. And there goes sailing. A little more alcohol. And I'm going to degrease that rear dovetail. Get any dirt and contaminants out of there. And a new one here. I really like these medical uh, cotton applicators. They are, uh, if I need to get, you know, length or something there, they're really handy to have. So I like them. 
and that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to take my rear sight and fit test it just like we did the front sight. That goes all the way across, so that's great. So I'm going to take my thread locker and I'm actually going to put it um, I'm actually going to put it on the sight itself on these edges. When I, uh, when I get ready to, to put the sight on, I'm going to push that spring down in there. And as I start the slide, uh, the, uh, the sight into the dovetail, I'm going to just kind of depress that spring with a, with a punch until it's covered up just like that guy right there. I'm going to make sure that it's even on both sides. I'm going to take and oh, wrong wrong Allen key there. I'm going to take the Allen key that came with the rear sight, which is a little different size, and tighten that uh, tighten that set screw down just till it makes contact. That's all I got to do. I'm not going to over torque it. And then I'm going to do what I did uh, in the front. I'm going to take that um, take that thread locker and work it all the way down in those little grooves and nicks and crannies of that rear sight and let them sink in. And again, I'm going to let that sit for a little bit uh, before I wipe it off. Now, the front has had an opportunity for uh, for the thread locker to seep in. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it. I'm just using a, a, a clean chop rag right here. And then uh, I'm going to take one of my applicators that's clean and just kind of mop up around it. Again, this is just the excess thread locker. The instructions say um, that it's it's good to leave that thread locker on there uh, for at least uh, you know an hour or two before you uh, shoot the firearm. I am um, I'm prone to uh, wait 24 hours. It may be overkill, but uh, I, I know people that uh, use that formula and it works well for them and. Um, so what I'll do uh, now that uh, I've got them installed is just let them sit for 24 hours uh, and to let that thread locker uh, fully take hold uh, before I do anything else with the gun. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the thread locker from the rear. You don't have to wait a long time. It's just just an opportunity to for that stuff to get down in there really good. So I'm just cleaning that off. Mm -hmm. There, and I'll let uh, I'll let it sit for about 24 hours uh, before I do anything with it. Um, uh, I've got a review on the X, uh, XS uh, DXT2s, uh, the ones that glow in the dark. They're uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, so that's it. So now we'll go ahead and reassemble. Slide in the barrel. A recoil spring assembly.
There we go. So there you have it. Simple as that. The last thing I'm going to do is put this uh, firearm back in fighting condition and set it aside for about 24 hours and let that thread locker set in real good uh, before I put it back in the holster and start carrying again. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. We'll see you again next time.